Yes, welcome to the Oval for this NatWest semi-final. Surrey against Lancashire. Now, in the morning, all our hopes hang on a prosperous weather forecast. We're hoping for the best, and it was dry but cloudy, and it was exactly that all day. In fact, we even had some sunshine before the end. The toss was won by Pat Pocock for Surrey, and he put Clive Lloyd's Lancashire into bat. And the teams were strong, they were experienced. There was, on the Surrey side, Trevor Jesty in marvellous form, scored 179 in the last match here, and Sylvester Clark, the great threat, the strike bowler. And for Lancashire, the wide experience of Clive Lloyd, with players like Paul Allett and Graham Fowler, international players, to back him up. Well, we join with the first ball of the second over of this match. There's one run on the board, and Bicknell is bowling to Gian Mendes. Start for the young man. Mendes caught at gully with his first delivery. And he looks rather happy out there at the moment. I think he's going to jump over the moon. <laughs> a marvellous start, the young man. This is a fairly nervous ball from Bicknell. Well pitched up, just a little bit of late swing and a gentle catch to gully. What a great start for Surrey. And now it's Sylvester Clark to John Abrams. Nice to play down there by John Abrams. Alan Butcher. He's the brother of Ian Butcher, of course, who plays at Leicestershire. He's the elder one of the two. Oh, that's a brilliant catch. Only power third delivery, and he really was half trying to avoid it and half trying to flick it round the corner but certainly a very fine catch by Richards down the leg side there. A very vicious delivery from Sylvester Clark. Dug in short and just self-preservation by Fowler. A marvellous diving catch by Jack Richards. Great reception here for the big man Clive Lloyd. He's not going to go on playing much longer now but uh, been a marvellous servant for the Lancashire Club. See the wicket here again. Fowler trying to avoid it and not getting his bat down, but a very fine catch by Jack Richards there. And now it's Sylvester Clark to John Abrams. Well, well, well. It was going quickly. It's David Thomas and Monty Lynch. The problem for them was it was going between them. And it's uh, four runs to John Abrams, but not the way he'd really like to get the runs. Change of bowling, it's Mark Felton now, replacing Sylvester Clark. Comes in to bowl to Abrams. Oh, plays on. All in a good straight under. Certainly a crack of ball on wood. And uh, with his first ball, Mark Felton has done the job. Good delivery. Well up, virtually Yorker link, swinging a little bit in and virtually playing on, but it virtually squeezed through on its own. Another one gets through there. It's interesting that there are three slips, as there should be on a fast wicket. And twice the season, edges fly through. That was not a catch, but. Uh, Four runs very welcome. Neil Fairbrother off the mark. So replacing Martin Bicknell at the pavilion end is David Thomas. Well, at last Clive Lloyd's managed. He's been trying to play that shot on quite a few occasions. And he's getting it through for two runs this time. now in pretty deep trouble. Thomas getting his line right on this occasion. Fairbrother playing right across that line. 
and absolutely plumb. The first time I'd seen Martin Bicknell, the 17 year old, tremendous prospect. And it's he who's coming back into the attack now from the pavilion end. Oh, cracking shot. Just faintly over pitched there, but it did swing. It's good enough, but uh, you can't make that little margin of error with Clive Lloyd. Procock to O'Shaughnessy. Another cracking shot by Ty Lloyd. And this is a model, too, for all you young batsmen at home. He's soldered through some appalling patches this morning. Played and missed, all sorts of trouble. He was hit by Clark. But if you hang on there, suddenly the strokes will come. Clive Lloyd looking to break out of the confining stranglehold that Surrey have had on him two beautiful boundaries in the last couple of overs. O'Shaughnessy not knowing much about that one. But four more runs to Lancashire. And they're having a little bit of good fortune at the moment. Extra bounce from Becknell. O'Shaughnessy not knowing where that went. Flying off the edge, just out of Lynch's grasp, but second slip. Four runs there. Alec Vise. Clive Lloyd trying to play it round the corner, but uh, didn't get a touch. But just brushing the pads. And that's the 100 up for Lancashire. Which is coming the 33rd over. Well, that was typical Clive Lloyd with the ball and the umpire hoping to get out of the way of it. That, in fact, was not a bad length ball at all by Pat Hogarth, but Clive Lloyd just swung through it with all his height and weight and hit it straight back over his head and now it's Alan Butcher to ball from the villain to Clive Lloyd yeah. and certainly on the up there Clive Lloyd yes nicely stopped by Dave Thomas but uh, still three in three runs in it for Clive Lloyd and that's the great man's fifth there. Beautifully timed off his legs through mid wicket and no field of bothering to move. This is a beautiful shot, pitching mid and legs straight through all the way along the crown. Well, you could call that a chance, but. Uh, on the other hand, he might have lost two fingers in the attempt. I suppose since uh, Alan Butcher got a hand to it, one got to technically call it a chance, but um, he's probably regretting he ever got a hand to it at all. Um, when Clive Lloyd does something like that, you're better off uh, pretending you didn't pick it up or something. That's the 150 up in 265 balls. Shot there by Steve O'Shaughnessy down the wicket, driving Pat Pocock straight. It's the one run though, he's got two men deep now, long off and long on. Yes, and that's the 
wicket they wanted. Clive Lloyd getting back, making room for himself and trying to flash at Pat Pocock and just getting a little edge. And by keeping himself on, he's managed to get the wicket of Clive Lloyd, so that's the wicket that Surrey really wanted. Clive Lloyd felt that he had to go for everything. Steps back to cut Pocock. It bounces at first out of Richard's hands, but he's lucky enough to catch the rebound. Andrew Hayhurst is the new batsman, 23 years old. He's just played three matches in the NatWest competition. Oh, brilliant effort. Absolutely brilliant effort by Monty Lynch. It just didn't stick. If Lynch had had a bit of luck here, he might have just knocked the ball up a bit higher than being able to catch it on its way down, but a magnificent effort all the same. And it's Pocock now who's going to bowl his ninth over to O'Shaughnessy. And that's the one that got away. Simple as that. Only one shout. Andrew Hayhurst is off on his way, and that's a wicket for Alan Butcher. No hesitation from Hayhurst. Just a little nick, and he sets off on his way back to the pavilion. Another Lancashire player not waiting for the umpire's decision. Good to see in these very competitive times. Chris Maynard is the man coming in. And Mark Feltham now takes over from Pat Pocock at the Vauxhall end. Oh, it's well played. Nothing like a piece of improvisation. And especially when it takes you to your half century. Steve O'Shaughnessy started off supporting Clive Lloyd and now he has his own moment to enjoy. David Thomas coming back into the attack from the pavilion end. <laughs> Little Nick. It flies away here. Hard August outfield at the oval and the 200 is up for Lancashire. Perfectly hit. Classical shot. Ah, oh, lovely six. Chris May on the batsman. 17 runs off the over. It's in the air. As caught, and Alex Stewart's very pleased about that. And I think this side would be very grateful for that 22. And here we see how Chris Maynard fell. He was a bit unlucky to find the fielder out there. Another long hit on the leg side. Alex Stewart moving quickly to his left and taking the catch. The scorecard reads 2.14 for seven. And a great roar of approval as the next batsman came in because it's none other than Flat Jack, Jack Simmons. <laughs> Nicely placed. Best of Clark back. Well caught. One close fielder, that was first slip, Monty Lynch. 
and uh, it was interesting to see how he wasn't standing at first or second slip, somewhere between the two. But it's a fine catch, going very quickly, the extra speed engendered by Sylvester Clark. So Steve O'Shaughnessy, after fine innings, is caught by Monty Lynch to bowl Sylvester Clark for 62. Paul Allott is the incoming batsman. Oh, dear, dear, dear. Well, who's for tennis? It was an extraordinary shot. But Sylvester Clark does beat them for speed, and Paul Allott set off to play a very ambitious shot. So Court Stewart will Clark first ball for naught. So, we have uh, Michael Watkinson entering the arena with five and a bit overs to go. Well, that saved the hat-trick. Optimistic there, I think it, uh, if he's going to have a slug, you have to wait for all the last over, but uh, I don't really think there's much chance of him hitting that. A pretty quick delivery again. Dead straight, very quick, uh, and with all due respect, Jackson was nowhere really near that. So 229 all out, 58.3 overs. Marvellous partnership between Clive Lloyd and O'Shaughnessy of 99, and Lloyd, the old man, really showing them the way. But it was just the feeling it might not be enough because the strike bowling of Sylvester Clark was absolutely crucial and could Lancashire match that performance of his? Four wickets for 21 runs in 11.3 overs. The official rate required, very modest, under four and over. Surrey is setting off for 2.30 to win and we'll join their innings now in the first ball of the third over. Allett is bowling to Butcher, the score five for no wicket. and short and uh, certainly no mistake from Alan Butcher this time. And repeat of the shot is in there. And it's caught. A magnificent catch there. Yes, and a magnificent catch there by Watkinson Butcher going for the hook shot, didn't quite get over it, a slight top edge and Watkinson nearly got in too far but managed to get back and at the finish it was really quite a brilliant catch. Uh, Paul Allen vindicated uh, for dropping short yet again. This was a bit shorter but a much quicker, got much higher and Alan Butcher was a bit late, got more of the splice on the back, got underneath it. Um, it looked at one stage as if my Watkinson was going to totally misjudge this, but he was still a few yards inside the boundary, but a magnificent catch when he actually got hold of it. Right, so Watkinson from the Vauxhall end to Stewart. Hmm, yes. Now, what was impressive... In a very prompt way, Alex Stewart got in position to play that shot. And once he was in position, the shot itself was no problem. Thank you very much. That's out. Little hesitation there, just to check that Jack Simmons had caught that at second slip. But Graham Clinton has gone. Just pushing to a ball of full length from Paul Allott. Port Simmons, ball Allott 11, and Surrey are 30 for two. This is a good piece of bowling from Paul Allott. He bowled mostly short of a length to Clinton, getting him forward that time, and an easy low catch to the old pro, Jack Simmons. 
Still no change. Watkinson again from the Vauxhall end. He'll be bowling to Alex Stewart. Good shout. That's out. It means so much to them. Superb feeling for Mike Watkinson. He's got Alex Stewart over W. And so suddenly, sorry, are 30 for three. Alex Stewart shuffling across his crease. The bat not coming down straight. And Nigel Plews says that's out. And Lancashire right back in it. Monty Lynch is the new Surrey batsman. Oh, yes. <laughs> well, a brilliant effort to stop it, but it was very well played by Monty Lynch. Quickly in position again on the back foot. So very important point in the Surrey innings, and Trevor Jesty is a key man. He's a man in form, the man with experience, of course, long experience with Hampshire. And that's the sort of style. One in that place on tour and one in his reputation. Getting off the mark in real style. Andy Hayhurst coming on at the Vauxhall end. That was a lovely shot. Let it come, beautifully timed. Steve O'Shaughnessy, it had to be a direct hit, otherwise the batsman would have got in, but uh, perfect throw, one bounce, it hit the top of the stumps, and uh, that's really a silly mistake there for Surrey, they were going along nice and pleasantly, nothing really happened to worry them, and then you get the run out, and of course that can swing the whole game again, so there's Monty Lynch, run out, and absolutely a wicket thrown away. Easy single down to fine leg here. Uh, but Monty Lynch immediately set off that if he was determined to make two out of this. Steve O'Shaughnessy has got a good arm, he's a good flower, and really he virtually had it in his hands by the time Monty Lynch took off. A direct hit and well out. And it's Steve O'Shaughnessy to continue from the pavilion end. Well, the batter slipped most of the time, but uh, he's out now, and uh, fortunately for Trevor Jesty, he's played that shot once or twice and got thick edges. This time, that would have been straight into first slip. And the luck going with Jesty there. Desperate dive by Chris Maynard, but can't make it. Surrey just ten runs ahead of what Lancashire achieved at the halfway point. So this NatWest semi-final, beautifully poised for yet another exciting finish. The new sponsors have certainly had excellent value, particularly in the finals, which have 
often ended off the very last ball of the match. And there it goes, as soon as it's up to him, picks it up, over deep mid-wicket, and over the ropes for four runs. Richards now facing the task of trying to get the wily old Jack Simmons away. That's the hundred up. Jack Richards with his feet nice with the silver to Jack Simmons, getting down the wicket to him. Just pushing that one to mid on. And the hundred came up off 193 balls and the second 50 in 95 balls. So it's a Shaughnessy to Jack Richards. And yes, that's not a good shot, but that's the breakthrough Lancashire wanted. Bit of a slack shot, very wide, flash at it. That's happened on four or five occasions, and they've got away with it. But on this occasion, Jack Richards got a little touch, and Chris Marnock taking a good catch there, well wide to his right. The gap was there for him to hit it through as uh, there's a man at deep square cover. It was quite a defensive field on the offside. And that's what he was aiming for, and it was just too wide, really, to hit the ball. Oh, that's as good a shot as been played all day. And what a way to get off the mark. Perfect cover drive there by Dave Thomas. And that's just where David Thomas likes them, just wide of off stump, full flow of the bat, and four runs from the moment he hit it. Oh, that's a fine stroke there by Trevor Jester. He's always been a pretty good straight hitter. But that's gone way over the ropes, and that's a pretty big hit at the whole ball. And that's his 50. Trevor Jesty taking the gamble, uh, deciding that Jack Simmons is composing too much of a stranglehold, goes down the wickets, and that's a beautiful shot. It's in the air, and it's caught. John Abrams, the catcher. So David Thomas comes out of the little shell which was working so well for his side and just chooses the wrong ball, the wrong person. So Thomas, or Abrams, Bo Simmons for 12. And this is how he got the wicket. Thomas not quite getting there, bottom of the bat, and straight to Abrahams. Oh, and look at the skill there. And the new batsman is Mark Feltham. There's the key man, Trevor Jesty, and as long as he's there, then Surrey will be very confident of winning this match. 150 goes up. And this is the man who could win the match for Surrey. But delicately poised, 150 for the loss of six wickets, chasing 230 to win in the 60 overs. Trevor Jesty looking as though he may have just tweaked a hamstring. Or possibly a bit of cramp after all that charging up and down the pitch. Not very happy. Well, this is urgent. Sorry, you need someone out there quickly. 160 for six, 48 overs. Alex Stewart is the man who's been nominated. He came in at number three. 
and was out for seven but now he'll have a chance to run some more a superb shot four runs on one leg a Graham Fowler has to run across the whole width of the oval here he's a deep mid wicket for that over and he's just been changed with a Shaughnessy down a deep backward square leg it's okay being a specialist outfielder, but at the Oval you have to cover acres. He scored. And the man who has moved, Steve O'Shaughnessy, is the man who takes the catch. That must give him immense pleasure. Again, the bowler, Jack Simmons. And a brave innings by Mark Feltham. Seemed to have a wide range of shots there. But quarter shown as he Paul Simmons for 12 and the seventh wicket falls for 173. Beltham going for the lap, taking it from way outside off stump, but straight to Steve O'Shaughnessy. And what a servant to Lancashire cricket and Lancashire one day cricket in particular Jack Simmons has been I read an article in the press over the weekend saying how he would dearly love to get to another Lord's final well his county very well placed to do just that here's Paul Allen to Trevor Jesty A tremendous blow there by Trevor Jesty. On the up, it wasn't a half volley, but it gave him a bit of room, and the one thing Trevor Jesty likes is just that little bit of room. So Mike Watkinson returns to the attack now. Oh, that's a great shot. Straight over mid-off. Very tremendous blow that, uh, no trouble at all. No blame can be attached to the bowler, a good length ball, in fact, coming in a little bit from the off stump, and he hit it on the up straight over the mid-off who was back at the edge of the circle. A superb shot. So the 200 coming up in 324 balls, and the last 50 in 46, which is the fastest 50 of the match. skyscraper height he got under it poised himself and took it and uh, tremendous catch by the little man you can see the Lancashire players there they're absolutely delighted it was a vital wicket was that well, this was one of the highest hits I've seen for a very long time way way above us right at the top of the pavilion at the oval here and I don't think there are many players who in this situation would have envied Neil Fairbrother getting underneath that. Seemed to be up there in age, which it was, but he got underneath it, he steadied himself, and in the end, made it look a relatively easy catch, which it certainly wasn't, and uh, I, for one, would have looked round for someone else to catch that. So it's Paul Allett to Pat Pocock. down to the last two so Lancashire are really on their toes again now so Pat Pocock possibly looking for runs well that was a good delivery just came back there was a pretty pretty large gate at the time 
between bat and pad. But possibly looking just to push the ball away for runs. That's well bowled by Paul Allot. That's Paul Allot to Trevor Jestic. He's gone for the big one and got an inside edge, but it's gone to square leg for four. Certainly off the edge, and Paul Allot not really impressed with that. That completes Jesse's 100. That's a pretty good knock, well, a marvellous knock. 128 balls, 1 6, and 12 fours. And it's his second 100 in this Nat West competition. It'll be interesting to see whether Trevor Jesty takes, if he gets a single, whether he takes it or whether he retains the strike in the attempt of getting either twos or fours. That's a good shot. They're looking for two. But he's going. No, yes, no. Oh, that's a bad throw. Must have been a chance of a run out with a low, flat, first bounce throw, but uh, the Shaughnessy are going right over the top. It's a fine shot again, it's in the air, and foul has caught it, a brilliant catch. And the Lancashire lads are absolutely over the moon, even Jack Simmons is doing the 100 yards in 10 seconds down there. Tremendous catch, but it's very dark, and looking to the background, it would not be easy, but how unfortunate for Trevor Jester, who's played so well. Well, that was the card that tells the amazing story. And what a fabulous innings by Trevor Jesty. 112, and the extraordinary drama at the end of having a, the 17-year-old Bicknell as his partner and also Stewart out there running. It was uh, all too much for the Surrey fans and tremendous jubilation for Lancashire. It was a sterling performance the, by the Lancashire bowlers. And Paul Allard keeping his cool there, three for 47. And the young men under pressure all the way along. Even young Hayhurst, who had to bowl the last but one over. So, the result, no one can change that. Lancashire beating Surrey by four runs. Brilliant performance, was it not, by Trevor Jesty to have that hamstring problem and then to bat so astonishingly well. And then, at the last moment, the finals of court quite brilliantly by Graham Fowler. He, of course, Trevor Jesty, was the man of the match.